Ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living legacy of destruction, Boo Boo Stain. All of that like and subscribe button, so we can climb even higher, the 1400 ladder. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm in a really good mood today. I'm in a much better mood than I was the other day when I made that love-hate relationship with Yu-Gi-Oh! video, and I really appreciate all the kind words and support. And you know what? We're back. We're feeling good. We're ready to entertain. We're ready to drop some Tempa Dookie bombs. Oh, it's going to be fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. So I want to talk about uh, Kong's cards. They had a uh, Legacy of Destruction tournament. And it's really interesting to see some of the early ideas that people are messing around with with um, Tempai Dragons and some of the other decks too um, that I saw do well at this tournament. We're going to go through those. Uh, I'm going to hopefully be able to just click through and see all the deck lists here, but we'll we'll play along as we go. But primarily, I do want to talk about Tempai. Um, now, obviously, with this not being like a regional or a YCS or anything like that, this is a, I guess you could call it a glorified local, but it's still interesting information to look at and think like how can we make tempai better now i personally have been messing around with like 19 hand trap tempai um i've also been messing around with a little cash tira engine because then that can connect you to the world sees atlantis raging phoenix Promethean that you're seeing down here in the extra deck then i've also been messing around with um the rocket engine and dragon link and all that um because ending on just a borland is actually still pretty insane um if you open up like a buy steel then you can also end on disc powder which isn't uh terrible at all obviously if the opponent has something like nibiru that does get rid of the borland and by extension the disc powder um but it's it's ideas it's theories right like ending on even just a borland is insane so I, I wanted to look over these these deck lists here. I'm not going to go by card by card, um, just more like a broad discussion. But it's interesting to see that people are still playing a crap ton of hand traps. Like I was going back and forth with some people on this, and they're like, you can't be playing like 15 plus hand traps. Like the OCG has max C. We don't. Um, you know, it's it's a totally different aspect when it comes to deck building. And you look at this build. I mean, they're playing three, six, nine, twelve. They're playing 15 hand traps. But then they're also playing Necro Valley, Set Rotation, Double Lightning Storm, and Triple Droplet. The monster lineup is, I feel, going to be pretty standard no matter what. If you're playing Tempai, you're going to play like 3 Baidora, 3 Zongdora, and then 2 Fedora. Because Fedora is like kind of the worst one. You don't really want to draw it. And then like maybe 2 to 3 copies of the Field Spell, and then 3 Sang and Kaiman. Sang and Kaiman being, I feel like, the most broken support card. Uh, at least pre-Infinite Forbidden. But I don't like Droplets in the main, right? Like 15 Hand Traps with droplets plus board breakers like you're kind of expecting the hand traps to be able to do the job of stopping the opponent from building a board you know when tempai first came out a lot of people were like yeah play like 15 plus hand traps um if they make you go first you just end on seals pass with like four hand traps but seals pass really is not enough in 2024 now you look at this particular build they are playing a promethean princess package because it's not hard to uh get to this stuff I mean, just looking at it at a glance, I mean, you establish two dragons, Baidor and Zongdora. Baidor can get you to the Zongdora because you can just get Kaiman or the Field Spell, whatever. Uh, you drop out Zongdora, that's two monsters. Uh, maybe if you can get a third on the field, that gets you to the Promethean. Um, I feel like that there's better ways to streamline, like getting to the Promethean Princess's Atlantis package and all that. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be susceptible to Nib going first. Um... You put them on, you better have it. Um, I personally don't like Ancient Fairy in the deck. I feel like it's a little bit inconsistent. I really haven't seen a lot of people playing Necro Valley. I, I don't think Necro Valley is really something all that great. Plus, if you're going second, like, if you're going second, I'm not going to want to see Set Rotation or Necro Valley. Like, maybe Set Rotation to get rid of, like, the Divine Temple of Snake Eye. Um, but I, I'm I'm really not a fan. I'm actually personally more of a fan of, like, playing by steals, like, cutting out the fat here of, like, the lightning storms and stuff, and just play more hand traps, just have those extra bodies that you can use. Um, next up here is a Yubel list, uh, just to lightly touch on it. Throne is a busted card. They're playing Mature Chronicle. This is fine. Um, this is also why I don't like this build, because this build, literally, like, if you don't see Imperm or something, or if you don't go, like, end phase Nib, um, it just loses to Yubel. So, like, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm not even playing Droplet. I'm playing Super Poly with instead of like playing a bunch of links i just play heavenly sphere uh heavenly spheres 
and then I play like a bunch of fusions. Of course, we're playing Ubel because you can super poly the Ubel board and, and you can summon out your own Ubel fusion and it just board wipes them, which is hilarious. Um, here we go. Here's the other uh, Tempi build. So this one is on Magnumut. This one is on Shifter. When you play pure Tempi, you can OTK through Shifter, um, depending on how you open, obviously. Um, but it's not difficult in pure Tempi. If you play the Kashtira engine or if you play the Dragon Link cards, you can't play Shifter, which... You know, uh, Shifter, if you're playing three of it, you have a 33% chance to see it. It's one of those things, like, if you see it, you see it, you're most likely going to win the game, pimp. Um, I like the inclusion of Santa Claus, though, because Santa Claus being a generic, uh, essentially a generic kaiju that you're not limited to only having one on each side of the board. So if the opponent puts up a few interruptions, you can just Santa Claus. You know, if you've got two in hand, you just give them two Santa Clauses. And you could even put them in defense. You make Transcend Dragon, they get switched to attack mode. Um, it's it's really, really good in that regard. You know, I've been messing around with between Droplets and Chalice, and I'm really not a fan of these cards. Like, Droplets is good in concept, and Chalice is okay, but I just... Both of them together, or even, like, not maxing out on three, I'm just not a fan. This person is, like, kind of going both ways with the deck, where they're playing, like, what is this, three, six, seven, ten hand traps with board breakers and droplets. You can make the argument more for droplets in this deck compared to the other list, because you're playing less hand traps, but I'm just not a fan. Like, especially with hand traps, I'd rather cut the hand traps, like, leave in shifters for the 33% chance that you see it. But you cut the Magnemite, you cut the Ash, you cut the Imperms, then play like more board breakers at that point. Keep the droplets in because it is kind of decent going first and really good going second. And then, of course, you've already got the chalices. I'm, I'm not a fan of mixing in hand traps with um, board breakers like Lightning Storm and all that. I feel like you pick one or the other. And then again, with Necro Valley, it's, it's not something you're going to want to see going second when the opponent already has their board established. Um, I'm just not a fan. I, I, I feel like... I feel like the biggest issue, too, with Pure Tempi is that if you don't see a blowout card like Shifter um, or enough board breaker cards like Lightning Storm, uh, Feather Duster, what have you, you need to have some kind of backup plan for going first. Um, that's why I've honestly really been loving the Kashtira cards because you just play three Fenrir, one Pressure Planet, one Rise Heart. Yeah, the Rise Heart can be a bit of a brick if you don't see the Fenrir, but your end board ends up being a Zalantis plus a Zongdor, and if they don't have Nib, well, now they're playing through a Promethean, a uh, Raging Phoenix, uh, and then, of course, the Zalantis being able to pop a couple cards as well, and then Zongdor just to boot. Um, this person's, of course, on Ancient Fairy. They're, this particular build's also on the Tezulkan cards. I'm not a fan of the Tezulkan engine. It feels really inconsistent. You have to have access to, if I remember correctly, because it's been a hot minute since I did the combo lines for it, but if I remember correctly, you have to have access to all three dragons, um, or you have to play Fenrir to help subsidize um, for having like another level 7 on the board. Uh, it, the the Tezulkan engine, it, it's cute. It's adorable. Uh, you can put up a Crystal Wing... Um, this build isn't playing set rotation, so, and they're also not playing Black Winged Assault, so you can't get the effect off twice, because normally, like, you know, you'll tribute Heavenly Spears to summon out Baidora, and then set a card, and then summon out another monster, so you have to have another card that's settable in your hand to trigger the Tzulkan on your turn. Uh, I, I'm you, There's no reason to be playing both Lynx and the Tzulkan engine. You can trim the fat a lot in this build. I think that that was the only um, build... That was on here, uh, yeah, because this is, well, this is a Snake Eyes engine from uh, the the new format, actually, um, you know, do, do with that what you will. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below about these early builds from Kong's cards. Um, I'm really excited for this new format. I'm really happy that the uh, Tempai Dragon cards are low rarity. Um, I, I think that my, I don't want to say that my build's superbly better, but I just, I don't agree with a lot of the things that are coming out in the early works of the deck. Um, and for all I know, these people could have just slapped their builds together and just gone with it to see what happens. But it's going to be interesting to see how the deck evolves from here on out, especially pre-Infinite Forbidden. Because once we get Infinite Forbidden, you pretty much just play the deck pure. You bust out the trap card to make them skip their main phase. Like It's it's a beautiful thing. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.